In this video, I'll explain a squeeze and excitation networks paper, which proposes a new kind of operator that we can add to our CNN modules to boost its performance without adding much computational complexity. But before understanding how it works, let's just see what's the intuition behind it. Assuming that we have our input volume with a special resolution of H times W and C channels, if we just apply a convolution kernel, we will see that it does two main things. The first thing it does is that it fuses the spatial locations. And for every 3x3 three three spatial locations we have in our input volume, we only have one output element. And the second thing it does, which is the focus of this paper, is that it also fuses the channels. And instead of C channels in our input volume, we only have one channel as output. So the way the authors here propose to improve the performance is that first we need to have a different view for convolutions, which is a set of two-dimensional kernels. And having this view, when we have our input channel, let's see how we can apply the kernels. The first thing we need to do is that we need to grab the first two-dimensional kernel and apply a two-dimensional convolution to the first feature map or feature volume, which outputs this feature map. And the next thing is to grab the second kernel and compute convolution with the second feature map of our input volume, and then it outputs this feature map. And we can repeat this until we have the intermediate feature maps. But that's not the final output, is it? To compute the final output, we need to aggregate these feature maps by taking their sum. And once we do that, we have our final feature map. But why do we need to have this view? That's because now we can consider the relationship between channels. In other words, we can say which channels are more informative than the others. For example, if our input volume is our RGB image, and our RGB image depicts a picture of a grass field, we know that the green channel is more informative than the other ones, because the picture is all green, isn't it? So, by having this view, we know that out of these conv kernels that we have, this middle one that corresponds to the green channel is more responsible to grab the necessary information, since it's going to compute the convolution with that channel. So, one thing we can conclude here is that our convolution kernels implicitly consider their channel relationships. But this relationship is actually entangled with local spatial locations to capture things such as edges and that kind of things. So the authors believe that generally for every input volume that we have, if we can somehow add an ability to our model to learn some things that we can explicitly say, for example, this purple channel is more informative than this red channel, then the kernels would pay more attention to the purple channel and that would possibly improve our performance. But how can we model such thing? That's our issue, and in this paper they propose a very efficient way to do that, and let's see that together. The way they propose is that, given our input volume, we can perform a transformation function, which is our normal convolution, and it produces a new feature volume. For our intermediate feature volume, for every channel we have h times w entries. But ultimately, to know that one channel is more important than the other one, we just need a coefficient value. So they performed a squeeze operation, which outputs one single value for every channel. There are many possible ways to do this, but the others proposed the simplest way, which is global average pooling. And yeah, there might be more intelligent way to represent that, that's on you to find out if you're interested. But having this representation, it's not enough to know whether one channel is more important than the other one. So the authors proposed excitation operator, which acts sort of like an attention layer to say which channel is more important than the other one. And they used this equation for the excitation operator. They just take the z vector, which is what we have as our input, then multiply it by w1, which is just like a fully connected layer that maps the number of channels from C to C over R, and next it passes the output through a nonlinear activation function, 
which they used ReLU in the paper, and then they passed it through another fully connected layer, which maps from C over R to C. And finally, they passed the output value to sigmoid to produce the final output. And having these coefficients, we just need a scale operator, which is so simple. We just need to multiply each coefficient by the corresponding feature map, and we have this final feature volume that says which channel is more informative than the other one. And hopefully the convolution kernels after this feature volume would pay more attention to the more informative ones. And yeah, that's the whole general idea. But how can we use this in our architectures? For modules such as Inception that was proposed in GoogleNet, we just need to do the Inception module first, and then we have to do for a squeeze and excitation, which is global average pooling, followed by FC and ReLU and FC again and Sigmoid, and finally scaling it. And for residual modules, we can do this, for example. But this is not the only option, of course. In the paper, they did a couple more ways to augment the squeeze and excitation with residual modules, but they all act somehow the same, so it's not very important how you actually augment it with these residual connections. And now let's just compare the performance versus complexity. In this table, the original column is the one that the authors of the models reported in their papers, the implementation column is, as the name suggests, the implementation of the models in the current paper, and the S init column is the effect of adding X squeeze and excitation operators. So in this paper, the error are coming from image that they set, and as we can see, if we add a squeeze and excitation to ResNet 50, before that the top one error is 24.80 but it increases to become 23.29, which is quite noteworthy because now it can compete with ResNet 101 that has like two times more channels and its gigaflops is 7.58 while for ResNet 50 it's 3.87. So while having like half of the complexity and the runtime is much much faster, we are getting some kind of the same result, which is quite amazing. And for the other models, it also performs better when we add S in it, which I won't go into the detail. The next thing they did is that they compared the mobile settings, which are mobile net and shuffle net, and even in these scenarios, adding S in it causes them to work better, while we only need to add a few flops, which is not very important. And they also compared the learning curves, the only thing I believe it matters here is that the convergence speed is the same, but in every epoch when we have SNET, it reaches a better result. And the others thought, what if it works only with ImageNet dataset? So they tested it with CIFAR 10 and CIFAR 100, and they saw similar results. Even places 365 for scene classification, which is more challenging, it just produces the same thing, that if we just add S in it to our architectures, we will get a better result. And also even with object detection tasks, they used faster RCNN, and saw that if we just add S in it to the backbone block, the average precision would be even better. And yeah, so the overall thing that we can understand from this paper is that SE operator is a very good thing, and from now on, I guess, if we just want to have a better performance while we are having CNN modules, it's a very good thing just to try as inet operator, and hopefully it causes our performance to be better. And yeah, that was the whole thing. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like it, just don't forget to like and subscribe.